Bullshit. The No BS Marketing Show is brought to you by Larimer's Men's and Women's Designer Clothing. Free shipping, free returns. Shop men's and women's designer clothing, shoes, accessories, jewelry, and more online at larimores.com or in-store downtown Pittsburgh. It's the No BS Marketing Show. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich. Our guest today is Kate Lambert of Stage AE. But first, let's cut the BS. Are you one of those people that can concentrate more in a coffee shop than at your own office? Me too. When I need to come up with creative solutions, ideas for messaging, or write new content, I do much better at Rock and Joe on Penn Avenue than at Mass Solutions. For years, studies have shown that workers' primary problem with open or cubicle-filled offices is unwanted noise, but yet many of us can still function in a noisy coffee shop. Ever wonder why? New research shows that it isn't necessarily the sound itself that distracts us. Instead, it might be who is making the noise. According to a study published in the Journal of Consumer Research, the right level of ambient noise triggers our mind to think more creatively. Some level of background noise is better than total silence. That's why you might be at your creative best in a noisy coffee shop, but struggle to concentrate in a noisy office. The study showed that about 70 decibels of background noise, not too loud and not too uh, silent, can actually boost one's creative thinking by allowing our minds to wander, yet still achieve what's called distracted focus. But why aren't we as creative when the same level of noise happens in our open office space? We lack the discipline to stay out of those same conversations at the office. Sometimes we allow others to draw us in, other times we're more than happy to jump right in to that conversation on our own. What's the takeaway from the research? It's not about staying away from the noise. It's about staying away from the interruptions. The ideal workspace has enough noise to let your mind wander while still achieving distracted focus. And it's free from interruptions, gossip, and office politics. In other words, it's a bullshit free zone. Our guest today is Kate Lambert, a director of sponsorships for Promo West Productions at Stage AE. In her current position, she's met and exceeded goals set for sponsorship revenue for the venue, along with managing the VIP box seat sales for Stage AE. So everybody that's listening, we're going to try to get some free VIP <laughs> seats from Kate. She's been fundamental in outlining and executing marketing strategies with companies such as American Eagle, McDonald's, Coors Light, Highmark, and many others. Think about that. She's got it all covered there. American Eagle, that's good. McDonald's, Coors Light, then Highmark in case you get sick at the concert, and many others. Kate, welcome to the show. Thank you. So Kate, Stage AE, one of my favorite places in Pittsburgh. Uh, you've been there for a while. You have a pretty interesting, eclectic background where you've done a lot of cool stuff. You've met a lot of cool people. This is going to be a great show for our listeners to hear about you and the stories that you can tell us about not only Stage AE, but your passion with a local nonprofit. So tell us about your career path, your journey. Sure. So I uh, graduated in the late 80s, and at that time, there were not many jobs to be had, and uh, went back to the uh, the phone book, the Yellow Pages. I don't know if, if your listeners know what that is, but uh, um, actually, you know, went through the phone book and looked for any major corporation that, that rang a bell and resonated with me. And uh, that would be Kraft Foods. Mm -hmm. uh, sent my resume to them. And next thing you know, I had a, a sales job. I was uh, selling cheese and hot dogs and all those fun foods. Um, and who did you sell to? I actually called on the grocery stores. So living in Columbus, Ohio, and calling on Kroger and, and all the major chains, and uh, slowly worked my way up and became an account manager. Um, from there, I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, great city, and uh, became a category manager and got more into the analytics of the grocery industry. Uh, so always in food, and uh, it was very fascinating. And then I moved over to Nabisco, which was kind of a whole oh. new line of, of the grocery industry. We call it DSD, where you're actually delivering the product to uh, the grocery chains. And so now I'm selling cookies and crackers and more fun things to eat. And at that point, I did move back to Ohio and took a break to raise my family and... Uh, so those were 10 years of raising toddlers that I would uh, never give back. How many kids? Two kids. 
How old are they now? They're now in high school. I have a freshman and a senior. Whoa. Right? So uh, that's why I have all this gray hair. And um, moved to Pittsburgh. And an opportunity brought us here. And I decided it was time to come out of my uh, early retirement and had a connection with the Steelers because it really is all about who you know. And uh, networked there and said, you know, I'm really ready to get back into sales. W- what opportunities do you have? At that time, they said, you know what? We're building this little me- music venue right next door called, uh, well, it didn't have a name at that time. And they said, how do you feel about selling concerts, music, sponsorships? I said, I'd love it. So I've been with uh, Stay JE and Promo West Productions since the inception here in Pittsburgh. So going on seven years. Let's go the whole way back. So sure. you, I was speaking to a, uh, ironically, you're mentioning Ohio. So I was in Cleveland speaking to a group of C-suite people. There were 27 people. I think about 16 or 17 were presidents or CEOs. And then another 10 or 11 were C-suite people, CFOs, whatever. And I was doing my No BS Marketing Workshop. And they're ranged in age. There was a couple of 25, 27-year-olds, then maybe a half dozen people in their 30s and a couple in their 40s. But then the last 10 were people 50, 55, 60s, even a couple of ones that were like mid to late 60s. And these two guys kept referencing the phone book. <laughs> and it was comical because the, the the younger Gen Xers and the millennials were like actually like almost laughing right. at this guy. And during the break, I said, like, I know you're kind of poking fun at yourself. I said, but man, that's really dating yourself. So go back to that. So you, you were searching for a job and you're actually looking at the phone book. You're probably looking at the Sunday newspaper in Columbus, right? And Correct. circling things. So, uh, so what, what, talk about that process with getting that first job, about how many different companies did you apply with? How many did you interview with? And what ended up happening at that first job that really changed your life as far as how you thought about your career? Sure. Um, I went through that phone book and, and you know, again, no email. You were uh. you were sending off resumes and cover letters and typing them. And um, I was very diligent about it because I was living at home and that was not so much fun. So, um, yeah, Craft was – I went on several interviews, but Craft uh, was the best opportunity. I will say that I probably had one of the best jobs of any of my friends um, upon graduation with a company car, a nice salary, and, you know, free mac and cheese. That didn't hurt either. Um, But I will never forget that during the interview, they said, uh, what was one of the challenges that you've had to face, you know, to, to get you here to Columbus? And I said, well, I actually forgot my hair dryer this morning. And dried my hair over the, the heater in the hotel room. <laughs> so, uh, But it was a great, great um, opportunity, had terrific mentors and bosses along the way. Uh, wish I could have stayed with that company a whole lot longer, but uh, a move, you know, caused so that what, to change. So we'll talk a little bit about the difference between Kraft and Nabisco, because you're, you're going from one heavyweight to another. Right, and they're actually now the same company. So... Um, Yeah, Nabisco was different. I was an account manager at that point in Cleveland, and I was calling on grocery chains. So uh, in that role, you're setting up advertising, you know, your specials in the weekly ads, displays in the stores, uh, less store focus, more headquarter driven. But something that I've learned along the way that I really enjoy talking to all levels of people. If it was a grocery store manager or a dairy manager to a CEO of a grocery chain, um, I like the challenge in talking to all backgrounds and and all different levels of people. You mentioned uh, along the way you've had some mentors. We like to hear about that because it often helps uh, our audience, some people early in their career, even mid-career, that haven't had the fortunate aspect of having a mentor or two yet that really advocated for them. Sure. So there isn't anyone that I could specifically call out by name. (coughs) But there have certainly been, I would say, some strong women in my life that, um, you know, being in a fairly male dominated business have shown me to, to speak up to be confident to, um, you know, not be afraid to raise your hand. And um, a fun story when I actually took the role at Stay JE, new to the music business, knew nothing about concerts and selling rock and roll. I mean, it was it was a whole new opportunity. And uh, one of my biggest competitors, which is Live Nation, uh, the, the woman that has the exact same position that I have, that is my direct competition, sent me a care package 
the first week that I was at Stage AE with all the goodies necessary for working in the concert industry, from earplugs to, uh, you know, aspirin and hand wipes and what have you, and said, you know, welcome to the music industry. And we became fast friends. And, and it's hard to believe people can't believe that we're actually friends and friendly competitors, but we've actually shared some contact information and, and opportunities. So um, I've met some very interesting people along the way. Talk about how with that competition, what is that like with uh, you're working, competing against her, but mm -hmm. yet you really aren't like on a date. It's not like when you were selling at Kraft and you walked in and then right after you, someone else walked in to try to get that person to give more space to them. I don't think it's quite that way, is it? It's not, but um, there's, only some, there's only so many dollars in the market to go around. You know, it's Highmark or it's UPMC. It's uh, Coors Light or Bud Light. And so you're very limited. You have to find uh, the companies that are spending big dollars in the market. Um, and, and on that note, they might be spending one year, but not the next. So it's really learning the cycles of what those companies are doing. Um, we have, there's a lot of crossover. And people see opportunities with various music venues for different reasons. So, for instance, KeyBank Pavilion might have more of a country focus, whereas I would say our audience at Stage AE is somewhat younger, uh, more millennial high school children. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool that she sent you a care package. It really is. The job. Have you ever had a chance to do that with anyone else? I haven't, but I do need to pay that forward, and, and I'll have to think cool. of a, a neat way to do that. So I guess the question that, that I'm going to ask that I'm sure the listeners want to hear about is, when you think of the music industry and concerts, you do think of how cool and crazy and party and late night and hard work, and you know that there's the roadies and all this, and you, so it's an insane business that people... We really don't understand. We know that it's hard. We know when we go to the show, it's not just walking into the show. And I know you don't necessarily work with the artist and the, the actual sound that night or anything, but just tell us a little bit about it because that's cool to us. Okay. We don't, we don't know the, the glamorous part of it. Sure. So I would say out of, there's 12 employees at Stage A. We're a small crew. Um, everyone has their own specialty. Uh, some people wear two hats. For instance, I sell sponsorships and premium seating. Um, but I would say I'm probably the most nine to five person there is just because I am dealing with different companies and, and I have to kind of keep those business hours. Um, I do stay for several of the shows, one, because I want to see them or two, because I have a promotion that's happening that night or lots of clients coming to the show. I'll never forget my first year at Stage AE. I had a client who wanted to meet Marilyn Manson. Well, if you know anything about Marilyn Manson, he's a little intimidating. Uh, he only does his meet and greets after the show. And at that point, he is uh, feeling no pain. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> Uh, so at 1130, we were ushered into a room to meet Marilyn Manson, and he said some very, you know, disgusting things that I can't repeat on air. But uh, it was quite an eye opener. I was like, wow, I really am in the music business. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just kind of solidified everything. Um, I stay away from backstage. I really mm -hmm. try to. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, uh, it's kind of frowned upon. Uh, unless you have a reason to be back there, you're really, you know, have a role uh, with the artist. We all kind of leave that space alone. Uh -huh. Now, when you said like, if you're, if you did like a show and you had a promotion going on, you can actually see some of the show. You still probably have to go talk to your client and sure. the VIP seats and so forth, but you're able to actually every now and then enjoy some of the show. Oh, absolutely. I have seen more music. Uh working at Stage A, then I can count. I actually keep all my ticket stubs so that I can go back and refresh my memory because I would say I'm averaging about 30 shows a year. So there's a lot of live music to be seen. And it's so fun. Um, 
I used to only be able to rattle off, you know, some old timers like Bruce Springsteen and Sting and Carly Simon. And now I can actually talk about Lil Uzi Vert and Lil Wayne and, you know, Glass Animals. So uh, my music knowledge has certainly uh, grown. Were you a big concert goer in college and in your 20s? I really wasn't. Um, I Like I said, I had a few artists that I followed, but... Um, they weren't very current, or maybe they were current at the time, but now they seem so dated. And um, my children certainly exposed me to a lot of new young hip artists, but I won't say today's music is the same um, as what we what I grew up listening to, but um, they all have something special they, that they bring. If it's a high-energy show or some great lyrics... Um, there's always something that you can find in a new artist that I respect, and I respect the art for what it is. We're with Kate Lambert of Stage AE. She's telling us all about the promotions, the venue, and everything, and we're going to hear more. But first, check out this quote from Esquire magazine, one of the country's leading specialty stores for selection and service. Don't leave Pittsburgh without your little black bag filled with beautiful fashions from the city's premier family-owned clothier for men and women. Experience the highest quality designer and private label collections, impeccable customer service, and custom tailoring that have been Laramore's hallmark for more than 75 years. Now that's an endorsement. Shop online at laramores.com or in-store downtown Pittsburgh. So we're with Kate Lambert of Stage AE. Uh, talk to us about, the since this is the No BS Marketing Show, talk to us about how any listener can gain from the all the talent that is at Stage AE. It's not just for 15, 20, 25-year-olds. Talk about the broad target markets that you can reach with the shows that you have. Sure. So we... Um we're averaging about 100 shows a year, which I would venture to guess is more than any other venue here in town. Um, and no genre of music is off the table. We're covering um, rock, metal, um, alternative, indie, jazz, hip hop. Uh, we've just now broken into country a little bit more than we ever have. So we're really hitting all ages. And um, like I said, I do sell the premium seats so that if you do want to come to a show and, and have a seat and not stand like the younger fans do, uh, that is an option. And it's funny because you can almost tell which shows are older because our box seat sales will be much higher for that show. Um, but we really try to cater to everybody. Uh, our sweet spot is definitely the millennials. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone 55 years old that has not been at your venue? You're really missing out. If you want to go to a show and have an intimate concert experience and be able to see every facial expression of the performer, Stage AE is your venue. Very different than a uh, Key Bank Pavilion or PPG place where you might need a set of binoculars to see your artist. This is a really intimate experience with great sound, and um, you really get the full essence of the concert. So how do you do what you do? Because you, you'd mentioned you're not backstage, you're not dealing with the artist. So this is the whole other part of um, entertainment that the average person knows a little bit about because we're all affected by seeing sponsors. But I think sometimes people take for granted that we get great shows on television. We hear great radio programs. We read great columnists online or in a newspaper, and we forget that the only way that those people get paid is by sponsorship. So talk about what you do and how you do it. So my boss has told me that I play a very critical role at the venue. Uh, he checks in with me weekly to see what sales look like. Because honestly, without sponsorships, the venue doesn't stay open. You can't book five, ten bands out if you don't have uh, a bankroll of money coming in. What I've found is that companies nowadays, it's so... Uh, there's so much competition out there that you really do have to hit your prospect, your fan, five times. It's maybe more. You might know that statistic mm -hmm. better than I do. Mm -hmm. So companies like McDonald's see the value of our venue and they want to hit that fan many times so that our fans are thinking about McDonald's and not Chipotle and Burger King and, and what have you. 
So someone like McDonald's has purchased our new fan Wi-Fi system. You come into the venue and you want free Wi-Fi. You're logging in. You're seeing a McDonald's pop-up ad. McDonald's might be sending you a coupon down the road. Uh, do they require your email address to pop? They to do. Sign? Okay. They do. What percentage of people do it at a normal show? Um, it's probably about 40%. Okay. Unfortunately, people are watching concerts through their phones nowadays, and they're taking pictures and they're videotaping, and um, they're not putting their phone away to enjoy that experience. But that's a whole nother issue. But that's good for you because you <laughs> can is. sell McDonald's on the Wi-Fi. Right. So, so McDonald's is enjoying uh, being our fan Wi-Fi sponsor. They are also on the back of our tickets with coupon offers. Um and we'll do... talk about tickets in this day and age because sure. when you and I went to a show, if we lost it, if we lost our ticket somehow, we were screwed. Right. But now, talk about what percentage. Like I'm, a, I'm a Cleveland Cavaliers season ticket holder, small oh, season ticket I'm package. I'm a huge LeBron fan. <laughs> you, I, you can use my tickets for tomorrow's game if you want because okay. I can't make it. I'm serious. So what Flash Seats is, I haven't put them up to sell them. Sure. Uh, but Flash Seats enables you to transfer tickets, so right. you, all you'd have to do is sign up for the app. I should have charged them so they can get a sponsorship here. But all you'd have to do if you want the tickets for tomorrow is you would sign up for the app and I would just transfer my tickets to you. Right. So when I drive to Cleveland, I have them on my phone. If my phone would go bad, my whoever's with me, I could log in on their phone. So what percentage of people still use a print ticket? How do you? How are you going in that direction? How much are you using online? So uh, we are partnered with Ticketmaster. And so our different capabilities, you can buy tickets at our box office, you can buy them and have them left at will call, you can print your ticket at home, or you can have your tickets scanned from your phone. Um, not many people lose their tickets anymore with all those options available. Uh, we do have a great box office, though, that will help you replace that if something happens, but... I went old school. I went to a show at Mr. Small's and, and picked up the tickets at the will call window and they had like a cigar box there. <laughs> right. I was like, man, this is like 1985. They're it's collecting great. the money. I it was hilarious. It. <laughs> so, uh, but a good percentage of people don't get the printed ticket anymore. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So from McDonald's standpoint, then they still have their McDonald's ad on the ticket that I see here on my phone. Correct. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Okay. So, so that's a McDonald's example. What are some other things you can sell? Really everything from naming rights of the building, which we have uh, three more years with our partner, American Eagle. Uh -huh. And then we will be uh, taking a look at, you know, possibly changing our name or seeing if they want to extend that partnership. Do they, uh, do they seem like they like it? They do. They do. It it's, flows pretty well. It's interesting. Like sometimes the naming sucks. Like you, I know you have to get sure. the money, but it just sounds stupid. But stage AE sounds really it's cool. It's got a nice ring to it. Mm -hmm. Um. I also get to do all the beer and liquor deals, which are a lot of fun and make a lot of sense because most people are going out for a good time. They mm -hmm. want to have a beverage mm -hmm. when they when they go to see a show. So those can be a little bit more intricate and complicated because everybody wants to have their product in somebody's hand while they're enjoying a show. Car dealerships are popular, cell phones, banks, um, really any company that understands the power of music mm -hmm. and advertising. Um, you know, if you think about it, all the commercials, all the big commercials on TV nowadays either have a song in the background or are using music to mm -hmm. um, communicate their message. What's your favorite promotion in the past few years? And, you know, I, I know we didn't talk about this so much pre-show, so I'm putting you on the spot and you, okay. you can pick multiple ones if you're worried about like, uh, you know, you got multiple clients. But, but is there any promotion that stood out that you just went, man, we hit a home run on that. It just came out and we did it and the fans loved it. The sponsor loved it. Is there anyone that jumps to mind? So it's always great when you can give a fan that VIP experience because you can't buy those. You know, you might be able to to buy a meet and greet package and get your picture with your fa with your favorite artist for about two minutes. But we've done a lot of makeover packages or meet and greet packages where through our social media, you can register to win. And then you might get uh, a gift card to a restaurant to go enjoy dinner before the show. Uh, we've even gone so far as to do a makeover and cut somebody's hair and do their makeup and then they get to watch the show from the from the side of the stage they get their photo with their you know favorite artist um that's a really fun experience that you give somebody that um you can't buy mm -hmm. something else that i've become pretty passionate about and it was a, a nice way to tie in uh 
making money for the venue as well as um, pursuing a passion of mine, which is cycling. I have become an avid spinner, and I just find it to be the greatest workout ever. So I thought, how fun would it be to actually spin and take a class on the stage at Stage AE? Uh, three years ago, met up with uh, a very creative woman here in town by the name of Laura Early with Fame 15, and we developed this body rock concept. Basically, you come to Stage AE, and for $25, you can work out all day. You can take a spin class on the stage. You can take a yoga class in the pit. You can lift weights and what have you. And uh, we are now in our third year of this event. It will be next April, April 22nd. Um, Highmark is the presenting sponsor. They love it. They see the value in this event, and it's grown. Um, we're at about 500 strong. And I think uh, next year will be even stronger. So it's a nice way for me to bring money into the venue through sponsorships, ticket sales, and we're doing something healthy. And so what time does the event start? Usually 8 in the morning and wraps up around 2. And we'll two. have 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so there's like six hours when you can come. Correct. And okay. you can take as many <clears throat> classes as you want. We've seen people take three or four. And what's the price? To $25. $25. Bucks. Okay, yeah. so you get about 500 people to come. Mm hmm Okay, and then who do you have uh, doing the classes and so forth? So we partner with various studios around town. So many um, uh, workout studios have become kind of these boutique studios, if you will, that just feature one workout versus the old-fashioned gym where you go and, and do multiple things. So we're partnering with more of the boutique-style studios. We've had GNC in the past handing out samples because they want to hit that target demo. Right, people that are eating protein bars and and getting healthy. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty cool promotion. It, it is. ties it's to a passion fun. of yours. Yeah, I like it. Yep. Hear more of my interview with Kate Lambert on part two of the No BS Marketing Show. Thanks for joining us for the No BS Marketing Show, brought to you by Laramore's Men's and Women's Designer Clothing. Free shipping, free returns. Shop Men's and Women's Designer Clothing, shoes, accessories. Jewelry and more online at Laramores.com or in-store downtown Pittsburgh. Visit MassSolutions.biz for show notes plus additional marketing and messaging resources. Are you signed up for the NoBS Marketing Weekly Update? You'll receive timely, valuable ideas to improve your marketing and transform your message. It's light, intended to be read in two minutes or less, and it just might trigger bright ideas for you. To sign up, MassSolutions.biz. Remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions, no BS.